the elevators on the rim and sensor of the platform. Central Park and we were hoping to catch some fall foliage some orange trees but we didn't make it <laughs> everything is like gone now so anyway I thought I would answer some questions while we're what so anyway I thought I would answer some questions while we're here at Central Park since I get a lot of questions about the cost of living in New York my expenses how much I paid the agency what is my visa and I, th I thought I would make another Q&A video to answer all of those questions while we walk around in Central Park. So let's go. It go ask. Question number one, how did you get your visa? So I got my visa through a placement agency. So the visa that I got is a J1 trainee visa. For more information about this visa, I have another video that you can check out. So please check that out if you want to know more. So I got that visa from my agency, which is stageusa.com. And you can also check out that video that I mentioned for more information on the agency that I used. Question number two, how did you get a host company? So I got a host company through the same agency. So my program is a J1 traineeship. It is basically like a paid on the job training or like paid work experience. And it was the same agency that connected me to the host company and also helped me process the visa. So you pay the agency to help you with all of these processes. Red dog. Question number three, is it hard to live in America? So it's hard to live anywhere. I think everything is hard. It's hard to live in the Philippines. It's hard to live here. There are always challenges everywhere. But I think the challenge for me living in the Philippines for my whole life and then coming to this country alone, the hard part is adjusting to the whole cultural difference, adjusting to not having any family, not having any support, emotional support here, and also supporting myself and living independently here. That's really the challenge. But then once you get used to it, it's gonna be okay. You, you, you'll get used to it, being independent. Question number four, what is it like working with Americans? Okay, so in my opinion, they are not shy. They are like, they're very direct and they want to get to the point straight away so they want people who are like talkers they like people who are talkers and for me i am an introvert and i'm very shy and like in asian culture we are more reserved and then we say we say things like ma'am sir and we always respect authority like but then here we call our bosses by their first name and then in the philippines we always do ma'am sir so that was like something I had to adjust to, like just call like your boss and you call the owner of the company by their first name. So I guess here you really have to focus on the job, be more confident, not be so shy. I think they appreciate people who are not very shy. That's that's just my opinion because I am such an introvert and that was that was a challenge for me. Question number six, is it safe in New York? So in general, I think it's safe. Just don't walk alone at night. Walk with purpose. Don't make eye contact with the homeless people. <laughs> don't make eye contact with people trying to, talk, trying to talk to you on the street. Don't make eye contact with strangers trying to offer you things on the street. You still have to be vigilant. You still have to be cautious because there are a lot of scammers, there are a lot of um, and like um, crazy people here. There are crazy people here, but you just have to be vigilant. Don't mind them when you walk, and then in general, you'll be safe. Do you agree? Yes. Like, do you have anything to add? Um, no. <laughs> yeah, and um, be careful on the subway. Like, don't stand too close 
to the edge of the platform and just ignore like the homeless people. I would say just ignore them because um, one time I gave one time I gave food to a homeless person and then they didn't like it. They just did they, after they took it, they just threw it away on the train. So they little they literally threw it inside the train and then made the train dirty. So like I wouldn't do that again. So yeah, generally it's safe. Just be vigilant and be cautious. Question number seven. If an emergency or something happens to you, who do you contact? Okay, so of course there's the emergency hotline 911. You can contact that. But if you're referring to like who is your emergency contact person here in New York, if you don't have any family or friends, you have to give your family back in your home country the number of your program sponsor coordinator or also someone from the office if that's possible so that at least they have a contact person here in the United States. I would recommend that you have a family friend or some relatives here. It is extremely difficult to come here like alone with no friends. You will need emergency contact people. Um, so I guess if you're coming here, ask your family if they have any family friends or any relatives and that would be a really good help that would give your family peace of mind it would give you peace of mind just to have an emergency contact person and now we'll move on to questions about expenses and financial matters so I get a lot of questions about this so I'm gonna try and answer all of them here in this segment let's go Here you go question number one how much is the cost of the agency okay so the eight <laughs> cute okay so the agency that I used stage USA covered part, covered placement to a host company helping you with a visa and also buying you the insurance for your stay in America. So all those three costs together, I spent around 300,000 pesos. But here, I'm going to insert a breakdown right here. And I didn't pay that all at once. It was paid over the span of like 10 months. So after the interview, you sign the contract, you have a down payment, and then you go on interviews with the different companies. And then after you get accepted by a company, you make another payment. And then after that, you have an interview with a sponsor agency. And then after the sponsor agency accepts you, there's another payment. And then you pay for the visa papers and then the insurance so like there's like five or six different stages of payments throughout like the span of several months basically you need to have some savings or some money to be able to pay for the agency question number two what are the moving expenses from the philippines to new york so i do get this question a lot actually so i have it right here the flight cost me around 1000 US dollars because I also booked the flight quite close to the flight date because I had to wait for my visa and then as soon as the visa arrived that's when I booked the ticket and then the pocket money that I had to borrow from my parents was around two thousand dollars and then apart from that I had to pay the first month of rent which was at the time back then was eight hundred dollars for one month and then I had to give the deposit of another $800. So total of what I spent just to move from Philippines to New York is around $4,600. So that covers the flight, the pocket money for one month, my first month of rent plus the deposit for rent. So just to give you an idea about my background, I saved money for two years before coming here. I saved money I saved money working in the Philippines for two years to pay for the agency and then when I had to come here I had to borrow like pocket money from my parents and then having my savings and the money that I borrowed from my parents really helped me get settled in here for my first few months 
Is the training salary enough for living expenses? And that is a very good question. So my salary right now is around $2,000 per month after tax is deducted. So that's what I, so $2,000 is what I get to take home. And, to, and that amount is around minimum wage in New York State. So for the J-1 traineeship, you are guaranteed at least minimum wage for 12 to 18 months of work in the USA. And sometimes some companies are generous. They can give you more than minimum wage, but most will give you minimum wage. And for me, living here in New York, $2,000 is just enough for basic living expenses. So let me give you the rundown. Rent is around $1,000. Food is around $600. Transportation, like the subway and the bus, is around $100 per month. And the total of that is around $1,700, leaving you with $300 extra. But let's be real, sometimes we wanna go eat out, sometimes we wanna watch a movie, sometimes we wanna, we wanna go to events because we're here in New York. So realistically, we don't really get to keep any savings after that because we want to get the experience here in New York, right? So I would recommend to really bring some savings or save at least some money in your first few months so that later on in your stay, you won't really worry about savings later on. Save in the beginning so that you can spend a little more later. So when I first arrived in New York, I actually bought a lot of my first supplies at the Dollar Tree in order to save money. I also bought cheaper food back then. It wasn't the most healthy, but I was definitely able to save money at the start. But now I eat properly. I buy healthy food at the grocery store and I still cook all my meals. If you're interested to know how much I spend on groceries, I have another vlog taking you grocery shopping with me. So check that out if you're interested. So I would say that you really do need to have savings when you join this traineeship. Savings or like if you have money from your parents, that would really help because the salary is just enough for living expenses and like sometimes you might have to dig into your savings if you want to live comfortably here um, last question is the experience worth it so for me the experience is very worth it because I am here for learning for growth to get the actual Manhattan training experience, like my resume will forever say that has worked as a designer in Manhattan. And then that's like a very huge advantage for whatever country I will try to get work in the future. Or like if I try to get a job in the Philippines in the future, I feel like it will really give me a career advantage. That's number one. Number two is it's a very big learning experience personally because I get to live independently like away from my family i'm supporting myself here and i'm here in like a first world very busy hustler culture city like this city has like a lot of activities going on so i got to meet a lot of people from different countries and different cultures so other j1s such as myself from other countries um, i have made friends with them and i've learned about their culture so that's a good experience as well. Like I got to make friends with people from other countries and I got to learn more about the world. And these are like memories and experiences that I will keep with me forever. And they have really contributed to my overall like growth and experience. So yeah, that's why it's worth it for me. <laughs> So if I were to give you guys some words of advice, if you're interested in this program, number one, you have to do research, like lots of research because, for example, the prices now could be different than the prices when I did the program because I did it before COVID and before the recession. So you have to research the prices of the agency again, you have, you have to check on the website. Also, number two, you have to have savings. Um, I had to work for two years to save money to pay the agency and the sponsor and then I still had to borrow money from my parents for the pocket money so it does help if you have parents who are willing to support you in this program because it really takes money here and I do consider myself privileged that I was able to like come here and afford this program 
and experience working and living in New York. So I just want to be real with you all that you really do need to have a little bit of money for this. And finally, um, for this particular program, the J-1 internship or the J-1 traineeship, you have to view it as some sort of educational experience. Like you're not really here to like make big bucks, you're here to learn and gain experience and further your career and your education. So if you see it that way, then you will be able to put everything into perspective. And for those who are like trying to come here for a permanent job, then I would recommend researching the other visas, the other employment visas. And that's it for today's video. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I will try to answer them in another vlog. So thank you very much to everyone for watching.